Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be looking at uh, Rookie Rush in uh, Special Booster 1.5 because uh, I definitely think Rookie Rush is still a really strong deck, and as uh, more options uh, become available to us, we definitely get to see how the deck kind of grows and evolves. And while I do really enjoy the Rainbow Rush style where you're just utilizing a whole bunch of different rookies to draw cards, I definitely think just with the increased number in tools uh, available to us, it definitely changes the deck quite a lot, and I think the deck definitely favors uh, the blue-green style, where you're just trying to focus on really high-quality blue and green uh, rookies and champions, and you are going to be utilizing a couple of champions just so that we still have some way to draw cards, just because uh, we cut out a whole bunch of the rookies that allow us to draw cards. So with all that being said, uh, going over the deck, starting with the Digitama, I'm going to be running four copies of Upamon because Upamon is really the only Digitama we need just because he allows us to draw cards. Next, uh, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running four copies of Armadillamon. So Armadillamon is just a very aggressively statted rookie. Most of the time, you're going to want to try playing him for his play cost uh, rather than evolving him because one to evolve on a rookie just feels really, really bad. So uh, most of the time, again, you're just going to want to play him, and he has some relatively decent stats compared to a whole bunch of rookies, making him a very aggressive rookie and one of the better options that we have. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Alekmon. So Alekmon is just your value-efficient rookie. Whether you play him or evolve him is totally fine. It doesn't necessarily matter, just because he is just an overall very efficient rookie. Next up, I'm going to be running four copies of Gabumon. So this Gabumon is really good just because he is one of the few other ways that we have access to drawing cards. So his nice on-play ability to draw us a card is the primary use on why we want to run him. Next up, I'm running four copies of Betamon. So Betamon is another really aggressively statted rookie just because it is a blue rookie with 5,000 DP. It has an Evo cost of one, which is a little bit unfortunate, but again, similar to Armadillamon, you're not really looking to Digivolve him. You're just looking to play him for his play cost and for paying three for a 5,000 body. That's just really, really powerful. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Vmon. So this Vmon is only in here just because he has jamming. So having jamming on a rookie is just really, really good because it allows him to easily survive lots of different security checks. So that way you always will be able to keep him around when he's attacking the security. And he definitely can apply lots of additional pressure onto the opponent just because we have a rookie with jamming. Next, I'm going to be playing four copies of Mushroomon. So Mushroomon is in here for exactly the same reasons as Armadillamon, except that Mushroomon is green, and we still want to see some green Digimon, so that just makes Mushroomon a really good Digimon to run. And then the last uh, rookie of the deck is going to be four copies of Auroromon. So uh, this Digimon is just, again, very similar to uh, Armadillamon and Mushroomon, except it has uh, even more DP for an even higher evolution cost. But since we're never playing any green Digitama in the deck, we don't even care about its evolution cost. And we just care the fact that it has a play cost of two with a 5,000 DP, which is very comparable to Betamon, which is a uh, play cost of three and has 5,000 DP. So just having a 5,000 DP rookie is just very, very powerful for the deck to be playing around with. Next on to the champions, I'm going to be running three copies of Gorillamon. So Gorillamon is a pretty decent champion. We're almost never going to play him for his play cost, but what we do care about is the fact that he evos for one and has 6,000 DP. So he's just a very aggressively statted card and allows us to evolve into him relatively efficiently. Next, I'm going to be running... Uh, three copies of XVmon. So XVmon is a pretty solid Digimon just because of his when Digivolving ability. So his when Digivolving ability is we get to unsuspend one of our level four or lower Digimon. This could include himself, this could include another Digimon, and uh, he's just really good just for allowing us to either unsuspend one of our Digimon for protection, so that way they can't swing into it, or unsuspending it so that way they could attack again and we get another attack out of it. So this is just a really powerful card, even though his stats aren't exactly too special, just the ability is what we're really looking to gain out of the card. 
And then the last champion of the deck is going to be two copies of Vegemon. So Vegemon is uh, very similar to Gorillamon on why we're running him. Just the low evo cost of 1 and 6,000 DP is really, really nice. But what's extra nice about Vegemon compared to Gorillamon is the fact that he has a play cost of 4 versus a play cost of 6. So even if we don't see any of our green rookies, we still aren't feeling super bad about playing the card just because we're already playing something that has a play cost of 3 and 5,000 DP. So what's a play cost of 4 and 6,000 DP? So it's just, again, another very aggressively statted card that's very tempo efficient and allows us to draw cards if we use it for digivolving. We're not really going to be playing any ultimates in the deck just because we don't need to, but we are going to be playing... Uh, a mega in the deck, and the only mega is going to be four copies of Puppetmon. So Puppetmon is a very fantastic Digimon for the deck. It is an insanely powerful card that could easily swing games in your favor. So his on playability is just really, really powerful where we get to suspend one of your opponent's Digimon, and then during the opponent's next unsuspend phase, none of their Digimon can be unsuspended. So this is just really powerful at stunlocking their field, so that way their field just can't really do anything, and if you built up a good enough field, then you could just steamroll the game just by slamming down a Puppetmon. Even though you are giving them a ton of memory to respond with, that's sometimes okay because they might not even be able to utilize the memory efficiently enough to just deal with the problem that you're presenting them. And then he also has a very nice added benefit of a when attacking skill of being able to gain one memory. So we do have a little bit of memory manipulation on a Digimon as well. Next up, uh, onto the option cards, I'm going to be running one copy of We Have to Stop Fighting. So We Have to Stop Fighting is a pretty interesting option card because its main ability for this style of deck is just really, really powerful. So its main ability is that uh, neither player's Digimon can be deleted in battle for the turn. So this is just really, really powerful because we are a very low-to-the-ground aggressive style of deck. Most of the time, our Digimon are going to be outclassed by the opponent's Digimon. So uh, this is a really good workaround on trying to get past blockers and not lose our Digimon. This is really good at getting past security checks at where we normally would lose our Digimon. So this card just is a really powerful card to be playing around with. The only unfortunate thing is the play cost of two sometimes could be a little bit on the hard side to deal with just because the opponent's going to try to give us as little memory as they possibly can. But this card's just really, really good at just ensuring your stuff is going to be living no matter what for the turn that you play this card. And then it has the added benefit of its security effect at being able to add this card to your hand so that way if you see this card anywhere in the game you'll always be able to play this card next i'm going to be running four copies of hammer spark so just the ability of gaining one memory is really really powerful for free and then on top of which it just being able to gain a two memory in the security is just really powerful because if you're trying to leave the opponent at one memory then uh, if they swing and don't really do anything with their one memory and hit a hammer spark, then that's going to immediately force end their turn. And that is just going to be a huge devastating blow because them losing their turn uh, against an aggro deck is just going to put them even further behind. So not only just the gaining one memory part is already nice, but the security effect is also nice. And then as the last option card of the deck, I'm going to be running three copies of Flower Cannon. So uh, Flower Cannon is just a really powerful option card because its main ability is being able to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon down. Most of the time, we're just going to try to utilize this to just rest blockers down so that way we could swing past them. And then it has a really nice security effect where you get to suspend all of your opponent's Digimon down without blocker. So this is just really, really powerful than a security ability to have. Sometimes it could just end up whiffing and doing nothing depending on the board state, but more often than not, if the opponent is trying to basically go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you and trying to aggro you out while you're trying to aggro them out, then they're going to try to build as powerful of a board as possible, and if they hit Flower Cannon early enough on, then it could just rest all of the opponent's attackers down, and then that really could just end up ruining the opponent's day, just because now they just can't aggro us down while we're trying to aggro them down. And then the last card of the deck is actually going to be a Tamer card, and it's going to be two copies of Davis. So Davis is just a really powerful Tamer card for this style of deck to be playing around with, just because, yes, he is a memory-fixing Tamer, so he will always ensure that we'll have three memory, and if the vast majority of our cards cost two or three anyway, then we're easily going to be able to play two to three things a turn, and that's just really, really powerful to think about. And then on top of his ability to just memory-fix, he even 
even has a nice on play ability where we get to check the top three cards of our deck and add one blue and one green Digimon among them into our hand and the rest go on to the bottom. So he's going to be one of the best ways that we could draw extra cards in the deck just because at worst he's drawing us one card, at best he's drawing us two cards, and that's just really, really good to have on a tamer, especially if he's coming out of the security where we don't actually have to play him, then we just get that effect for free and that could be absolutely devastating for the opponent knowing that we're going to have consistent memory and we're going to be able to draw one to two cards. So Davis is just an absolutely fantastic tamer for the deck overall. And then there's just a whole bunch of different cards uh, to uh, utilize to really customize the deck to make it what you want. And uh, there's just a whole bunch of different cards to do so. So if you want to run more copies of like Betamon, then Penguinmon shares the exact same stat line, which is a pretty decent and pretty solid stat line. If you want more copies of Elecmon, then you have access to Gomamon. If you want to run some varied stats, uh, you could think about utilizing Padamon and inversely Bearmon, because uh, these two Digimon share stats with each other, and it's a pretty decent stat line with a play cost of 3, Evo cost of 0, and 4,000 DP. It's just another very aggressive Digimon to be thinking about playing around with. You could also think about utilizing Gomamon, just because Gomamon's stats aren't the worst either, and then on top of which he does have a really nice inheritable of an on-deletion ability of gaining one memory. So the vast majority of the time we Digivolve, most of the time they're going to end up getting deleted at some point in the game, so Gomamon being able to get us a memory back for doing that is pretty solid. You could think about utilizing some other green level threes so if you want to run Goblimon and Argamon they share similar stats with each other and it's a pretty efficient stat line at that. And then you could also think about utilizing Terriermon. So Terriermon is just a pretty solid rookie overall for green, just because he has this really powerful ability where during all turns, your opponent can't gain memory except uh, by tamer effects. So depending on the matchup, this could be absolutely devastating because the opponent might be trying to gain some memory to do something, or they might need to get memory back from doing something, and Terriermon's going to shut those lines of plays out. And that's just really powerful to sit on, and then you could just swing with the card when you feel ready. You could also think about utilizing Palmon and Wormon as some additional card draw because they are both doing some very similar things. So Palmon has a nice on play ability where you get to check the top three cards of your deck and add a level four Digimon among them into your hand. Then the rest go to the bottom. So uh, helping to dig out uh, your level fours could be really, really good if you're playing a slightly higher level four count. Then uh, this definitely is basically like drawing a card and that's pretty good in a deck that doesn't have a whole lot of natural card draw. And then Wormon has a very similar style of effect where it's doing almost the exact same thing, except instead of being on play, it's on delete. So Wormon is a little bit more aggressive, where Palmon is more of evolution fodder. So there's the big difference in them. And then Wormon has the added benefit of being able to add level 5 Digimon. So if you're playing any level 5 Digimon, then Wormon definitely could be a better option for you. And then similarly to why you would consider running Patamon and uh, Bearmon, you could also run Kunimon just because they all share the same stat line. And again, it's a pretty aggressive stat line. Some other champions you could think about running is Leomon. So if you're running the BT01 Gomamon, where he gives the inheritable on deletion gain one memory, then Leomon is just a great complement to that because he just naturally has an on deletion gain two memory. So the pair of them together will give you three memory when Leomon is deleted. And that's just a lot of extra memory to be playing around with, especially since all of our cards are really cheap and really efficient. Even at worst, just gaining two memory back is still very aggressive and very powerful of an ability because because again, a lot of our cards are very efficient. And then you could also think about utilizing the security Digimon, just because having a card come out of nowhere could present a lot of extra pressure onto the opponent because that could be a card that they weren't anticipating on, and that definitely can swing games in your favor, depending on when it's revealed and how you utilize the card. So uh, Airdramon is uh, Blue's uh, security Digimon while Flymon is Green's security Digimon, so you have both of them that you could think about playing with, and then at worst, like even though their stats aren't super amazing, you still can utilize them to Digivolve to draw some cards, and that could still be pretty decent to do. Speaking of drawing cards, you could think about using Zudamon as like the only real ultimate you would want to run, just because he has the nice on-play ability of drawing you two cards. If you are going to be playing a little bit of champions, then you could also think about running a little bit of ultimates, and he is definitely a really decent ultimate to be playing around with, but most of the time, if you're going to be utilizing this card, you just want to use him to just draw two cards. 
And then you could also think about running Leopardmon, just because if you're going to be utilizing Zudomon, you could think about splashing in a little bit of Leopardmon. So Leopardmon has this really powerful one Digivolved ability where you could deploy a level 4 or lower Digimon from one of your Digimon's uh, Digivolution sources for free. So just being able to split your stack is really, really powerful just because, again, you're creating extra bodies and the extra body can present extra pressure. And then he also has the really powerful ability, which is what you really want out of the card, where during your turn, all of your level four or lower Digimon gain jamming. So just making sure that all of your low level Digimon, which the vast majority of the deck is, has jamming is just really, really powerful to be playing around with, just because it ensures that all of them are going to break the security and live through security battles with the opponent's security Digimon. So even if you have to hard cast this card, you don't necessarily feel super bad just because the benefit of giving all of your Digimon jamming could outweigh the cost of uh, playing him and giving the opponent a whole bunch of memory to be playing around with. And then there's a couple of different option cards you could think about utilizing. So the Ray of Victory is pretty good because you get to bounce a level 5 or lower Digimon back to the opponent's hand. Then if you have a Blue Tamer in play, you get to unsuspend one of your Digimon. So this is really good at trying to protect or aggress with your Digimon, similar to why we would want to use uh, XV Digimon's ability, except this is bouncing the opponent's Digimon back to their hand, so it's a huge anti-tempo swing. And then it has a nice security ability of activating its main effect. And then you could also run Kokaitis Breath for a very similar reason as the Ray of Victory, where you're just looking to utilize this card to bounce one of the opponent's Digimon back to their hand, just to try to get it off the field because you might not be able to deal with it otherwise. And then you could also think about running Hornbuster. So I think this is a pretty underrated card just because this card is still a very decent card for the deck to be playing around with. So the first big thing to note is it is a very low-costed option card. So there is a huge difference in this game between the different costs, and it is easier to play a card that is a cost of 1 versus a card that's a cost of 2. So Hornbuster only costing 1 is pretty decent, and then on top of which it has a main ability where one of your Digimon gets plus 3,000 DP for the turn. So the vast majority of the cards that we would want to be utilizing are 3,000 DP or more. So at worst, this will tie with a lot of blockers. At best, it'll swing over a lot of blockers. And even if it's not being blocked, just boosting your Digimon's DP to just try to make sure that you live through security checks is still very, very powerful and very, very relevant. Because if that Digimon lives through the security check, then it stays on the field and presents even more pressure on the opponent. And then on top of all of that, it has the really powerful security ability of allowing you to suspend one of your opponent's Digimon and then add this card back into your hand. So just being able to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon out of the security could be really powerful, especially if they're building up a slightly wider board state, then it definitely can stop an extra attacker, and that's just, again, really, really powerful, similarly to why we're running Flower Cannon in this security, but this has the added benefit of being able to add itself to our hand, and that's the big part of the ability, so that way we could then utilize Hornbuster after its security effect of resting the opponent's Digimon down. So Hornbuster is just a overall pretty good card and is definitely a very underrated card. Another option that you could think about utilizing is going to be Positron Laser. So because we are playing a blue-green hybrid deck uh, for the most part, Positron Laser is just going to always have uh, basically all of its abilities online almost at all times, unless we have basically nothing on our field. So Positron Laser's main ability is really, really powerful, where you get to choose up to two of your opponent's Digimon, and then they can't attack or block until the end of the opponent's next turn. And then if you have a blue Digimon in play, then you get to uh, bounce one of the opponent's suspended Digimon back to their hand. So this could potentially deal with three different Digimon to make them basically not attack, not block, or return them to their hand. And then if you want to run another Tamer, there's a couple of different Tamers that you could really think about. I think uh, the Starter Deck Matt is definitely one of the better ones that you could think about utilizing, just because if you're going to be running the Ray of Victory, it synergizes more with the Ray of Victory, on top of which it just passively gaining more memory just allows you to play more of your cards, and it helps you just get through a lot of your plays more efficiently. So that's really good, but if you want to also think about running the Red Starter Deck Tie, for the plus 1,000 DP boost, that's also a pretty viable option. I just think Matt is a bigger card to highlight because of the Ray of Victory. 
So for the most part, this is just what Rookie Rush is going to turn into for Special Booster 1.5. And while I do understand Rookie Rush is kind of like this infamous deck, it's still really good to understand how the deck is changing and what the deck is doing. So that way you could better understand how to play it and play around it. So I definitely think that Rookie Rush is still going to be a pretty powerful deck even in Special Booster 1.5 just because it's getting so many additional tools and has so many different ways that, that it could build itself that it is definitely a very versatile deck and is, again, a very strong deck to deal with just because the strategy on trying to deprive the opponent's memory and swarm the field is still very, very powerful. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, uh, I'll have the deck list down in the description below, and uh, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.